What is up everybody? This is Kunai and today I am with one of the most accurate prophets uh, in Zimbabwe right now. Uh, prophet Advocate Joshua. I believe most of you have actually watched most of his videos on YouTube, on Facebook, everywhere. So today we, we are with him and uh, he's going to tell us about uh, who Prophet Advocate Joshua is. Thank you so much, man of God, for being with us today. I'm indebted to be with you. Thank you, sir. So can you tell us about um, Prophet Advocate Joshua? Um, well, that's a a very broad uh, 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 demand coming from you. I don't even know where to start, but um, let me just say that I am a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a vessel of the living God, uh, blessed uh, with uh, various gifts uh, in, the, in the prophetic, and also uh, I also have got a, a, a profession. I am a lawyer in Zimbabwe, um, I, I, I am I'm, I'm quite young uh, right now. I think I, I, I just turned 27. Okay, so uh, you are a lawyer by profession. Indeed, I'm a lawyer by profession. And uh, so when they say Prophet Advocate Joshua, Advocate is is actually a a title. Indeed, it's a, it's a title. I'm oh. a man of versatility. Oh, I, I, I used to think, honestly, personally, I used to think that it's Prophet Advocate isn't a name because, you know, I, I know many people uh, who are named uh, Advocate. I know people are not going to Advocate. So I always thought uh, it's Advocate Joshua, it's your name. That, that's what I usually thought. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've actually um, been involved with many people who believe that uh, perhaps I uh, was uh, just claiming to, to be a, a lawyer. But that's actually my profession. Oh. Yes, uh, I'm a lawyer. I, 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 I practiced my law for five years in Gweru at Midland State University. Wow. Yes, and I, I'm actually one of the best graduate, law graduates that the university has ever produced. I actually graduated with a, a whopping 17 distinctions wow. in law school, yes. And I have a class one, um, uh, dissert, um, cl class one in, in my dissertation, that's my thesis, wow. which was in labor law. Hey, so... Uh, yeah, I think most people are now hearing for themselves because, you know, I have heard so many people saying uh, nowadays people who are becoming prophets is because they have got nothing else to do. So they're just becoming prophets uh, just to make sure they take people's money. You know, uh, this is what some people say. Indeed, indeed. But um, in my circumstance, it's, it's quite different. Uh, but even if you look at the Bible, the, the Bible says that um, Paul was a tent maker. Yes. Yes, Paul was a tent maker. So we, we actually uh, are going to experience a paradigm shift in the prophetic, in ministration, where you find that, uh, I, I, and that's my prayer, I'm praying that God empowers more prophets with, uh, uh, with, with professions, yeah. having something that you do outside the prophetic office, because that, that, that helps. Yeah, because it, I think it will actually help many people, because when you, when you just know that I've got a man of God, who is not just a, 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 a guy who, like most people think, mm. he failed school, he has got nothing else to do, and then he decides, I'm just going to get into the prophetic. Mm -hmm. So uh, how did you get into the uh, into ministry? Mm -hmm. Maybe I can say ministry, or maybe I can say the prophetic. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it, are they two different things? Um, my, when I started ministry, really, I can't really say started. It's like I never wanted to start a ministry. That's the starting point. Okay. It is actually the people who then made me get into ministry because I never wanted to start a ministry. Oh. What happened is that I was just gifted from day one. And uh, when my gifts started manifesting amongst the people, some would just dream dreams of me praying for them. Some would see visions. I remember, I think I received about uh, nine prophetic uh, messages from nine men of God oh. in Zimbabwe. Uh, the first one I think I received it when I was about, was it form one oh. in school. So all of them were saying you're a prophet, but I never wanted to be a prophet because I was just excellent in school. Yeah. So I remember even when I was grade five, I was already oh. seeing visions. 
but you know I was number one in class usually so it was difficult for me to say to accept that perhaps I might need to start a ministry and even with my family you know it's difficult when someone is excellent in school and they also now want to start going to the mountain the whole day you know praying for people and all oh, stuff like that it, it's, it's not really uh, there's this stigma to it yeah, yeah, yeah because everyone will be saying ah we want him to be a lawyer we have a, a doctor in the family something like that yeah I understand. yes so the, uh, that's how my ministry started it's, it's the people who led me into it really and there's a time i, I remember when i saw a vision i think uh uh it was it was senior prophet tb joshua he came to me and he said you have a great ministry, but you are stubborn. You don't want to start. I don't want to start. I remember when I was university, in university in my first year, uh, many people were now thronging my, 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 my room, saying, we, we want you to pray for us. We you know we dream about you. You know, sometimes when I was walking on the street, I remember I was on vacation in Chitungu. I was walking on the street and people started falling under the anointing. Oh, yes. So... With, you. Without you praying for them. Yes, I had not prayed for them. And people were just falling. Yes, under the people were just falling under the anointing. By just you passing by. Indeed. Wow. So the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter one that even before you were born, I knew I you. Knew, yeah. So I was born a prophet, but I didn't want to accept it. And this is my encouragement to everyone to say, yeah. if you feel like you have to do something, if you feel like God has empowered you with something, go for it. Don't be limited by anything because sometimes we limit ourselves and we limit, we tend to, to, to limit God's manifestation in our lives because we don't want to accept what, what God has already empowered us with. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because considering the stigma, that is, uh, especially considering family. Yes. Uh, because I remember, especially even, even myself, uh, there was a time, I think I was, I was young then, I said uh, to my mother, I want, I want to go to a Bible college. Uh -huh. And and everyone was like, <laughs> "Are you crazy?" Because <laughs> yeah. these guys they don't have money. They they live um, off of people's uh, money. Mm -hmm. They are given money by people. So you can't tell me that with all the intelligence that you have, you are good at school. Then you want to have people coming to you and giving you like sort of handouts. Mm -hmm. So why can't you just go and, and 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 continue with education and make sure that you get something that is. Uh, a, a real profession, mm -hmm. like they were calling it a real profession, because they say, uh, if you go into a ministry, it's not a real profession. It's like you are you are, you are just doing something that is not good. So mm -hmm. yeah, so that's how my ministry started. Uh, I ended up then having a, a prayer group, you know, because people were and even the title prophet. I never wanted to. Even now, it's not a title that I enjoy. It's a title that came from the people. Yeah, you have your neighbor starting to call you prophet until the, the name prophet. So that's how it, it, it became common cause. Yeah, indeed. All right. So, um, so when you started the ministry, uh, how was the, you know, the, the response? Uh, are you getting many people coming in? Uh, what, what, is, what is really happening? Indeed, the move of God has been that uh, radical. Uh, well, I don't focus on the people. I focus on the God that gives me the oracles to give to the people. My line of, 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 of prophetic mm -hmm. ministry is that one of ministering what God has said. So God can speak to me even about the president. God can speak to me even about the UN Secretary General. I am an oracle basically. I give oracles. Sometimes God can talk to me and say, so and so is about to die. I remember a couple of years ago someone God just tells me, tells me, tell someone in your congregation, oh. your time is almost up. Get ready to go to heaven. And he died, I think, five days after I prophesied in church. So my, my, I'm more of an oracle. I'm just a vessel. I can't accredit anything to myself. I, I'm, just, I'm just a, a nobody who God has made into a somebody because of uh, what he says to me. Right. Yes. So, but isn't it like uh, scary, like speaking to someone and telling them you are you are about to die or your time is about to? Yeah, it is. It is. It it's it's scary at first when you're not used to it, but there is a time that you then accept who you are. You see, the the challenge in life with many people is that we don't know who we are. Yeah, many people are doing things that 
that perhaps they have not been empowered to do because they don't know who they are. So when you accept who you are, it's like if you are a dog. You see, even if you are going to shout a thousand times, you can't change to become a chameleon. Yeah, that's true. You see, so even if you are going to act like a bird and you are a dog, you remain a dog. So I've accepted that. Look, I'm just an oracle, and sometimes some of these oracles, if you can't, if you don't say them, they become a burden to you. Yeah. You feel that there's a burden within your spirit. Yeah. So you you God will then you then pray to God and God will give you what is called prophetic boldness. One common character that is in the prophetic since the days of John, even since the days of Abraham, even since the days of Moses, is what is called prophetic boldness. boldness. So that is what enables you to go before the king and declare a thing. And I have done that. Last year I proclaimed the election result before it happened. Yeah. And we posted it on YouTube for everyone to appreciate that look, prophecy is not assumption. It is a reality that I live in. All right. So, uh, yeah, I think I, I, I have a great question about the issue of, of, of prophecies. Um, what is, what's, like you said, you, you gave the election results uh, before the elections, right? So, I, I remember those days, especially if you go on YouTube, they, uh, there were many, many, many prophecies about the election results in Zimbabwe. And most of them, from the way that I saw, most of them, they were saying something that actually didn't happen. Because most of them were actually saying the other way, the other, the other side, or maybe I can say they were saying Nelson Chamisa was going to win the election. So um, w w what do you say about such uh, prophecies? Like if someone says Nelson Chamisa is going to win the elections and then uh, uh, President E.G. Munangaga wins the elections, well, what can we say about a prophet who does that? Who says uh, this is going to happen and then the other thing happens? At times it's very important for us to consider this one aspect. And this aspect is about inquiring unto the Lord. At times you might realize that we can have a situation where someone is speaking your mind is different from speaking what God has said. And you can't say what God has said unless you inquire of the Lord. So usually, it might not exactly mean that the man of God might not be a man of God. It might mean that maybe they have declared a thing with the Lord that is not saying. Because we, we can't, you can't mix prophecy with your feelings. You get what I'm saying? You can't mix prophecy with your mind. You, can't, you don't have to come to the people and say, this is what is going to happen just because that's what you feel like on the day. Or that's what you want to happen. Or because you like this person. So we don't we don't say what we like. Is we should say what God is saying. Say. Yes. Yeah, because I remember so many people. And and uh, I, I, I you know I, I, I had so many questions within myself personal uh, that uh, this man was saying this and some were even saying Nelson in Jamisa's uh, inauguration is going to be the largest inauguration ever. And, it did. It and, did. and they were talking about it saying it is going to be last year. That was yeah. around August. They were saying in August, Nelson Chamisa is going to be the uh is going to be inaugurated. And, it did. and, and, it didn't, it and didn't the happen. other thing that also happens, there's what is called prophetic timing. Uh a prophet should not only exist in prophecy but also should exist in what is called prophetic time. Because the Bible says that the, the children of Issachar understood the times. Yeah. So if you miss it on time, people might think that you are giving a wrong prophecy, but you are giving the right prophecy, but in the wrong, wrong time. time. Or you might be in the right time, but giving the wrong prophecy. So at times what happens is that, we, you know, when we are seeing things, we see these things at different angles. Someone sees from a tree, Someone is seeing from the top of a building. Someone is seeing from the inside of the building. Someone is seeing maybe from 20,000 uh, kilometers far from the event. Yeah. So it might be true that maybe this event is going to happen. But when will it happen? Someone might miss when it's supposed to happen. But the thing is going to happen. Or it might never happen. Yeah. So timing and knowing when things will happen is very important. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's true. So yeah, I, uh, one other thing that I wanted to ask. Um, so what what other 
maybe I can say gifts or uh, things that you do in your ministry or in your ministrations. Is it only prophecy or if people come with uh, the people who are sick, uh, you can also, you, you can actually pray for them and they will, they will, they will, they will be healed. What other things that uh, you do in your ministry as well? Indeed, God uh, has empowered me with what I can term uh, perhaps off the cuff, I could say versatility in terms of gifts. I'm blessed with a, a litany or a pedigree of gifts, including the prophetic uh, healing and deliverance ministry. I function in, uh, in, in, in extreme deliverance. I function in extreme healing. I function in extreme uh, prophecies, such that uh, even in, 2000 and, um, in 2007, I prayed for a mentally retarded person. And by the grace of God, the person is now uh, normal. Uh, yes, and, and, and that's, a, that's a miracle that uh, shook uh, Chitung Visa. Uh, in 2007, I think it was a year after I had graduated from law school. And I have prayed for many people, other people who had uh, various kinds of diseases. Uh, they were healed. But uh, to, to glory be to God. Um, it's not, it's not by, by, by power, nor by might, but by His Spirit. By His Spirit, yeah, yes. True. Yes, yes. So that is how God has been functioning. I have prayed for many people, even in the UK, in Australia, uh, Tanzania, Uganda. I receive calls from all over the world. Wow. Yes, uh, we have prayed for, I remember praying for children in, in, in the UK. Uh, we have prayed for other people who did not even have uh, proper sight. You see, uh, various diseases, asthma is going, high blood pressure. Because he's a god of the miraculous. Yeah. So he can true. do it. Yeah, that's true. So, um, so uh, how do people get in touch with you if they want to get delivered? Because I know there are many people who might say, I really want to get in touch with this man of God. Uh, how do they get in touch with you? Um, I have uh, uh, various uh, Facebook pages. Uh, all of them, they are called Prophet Advocate Joshua. So if anyone goes on, on, on Facebook, on Facebook. types Prophet Advocate Joshua, they can see me. Uh, if they go on YouTube, they can also get in touch with us. There are contacts. If they go on Instagram, you mention it. And we also run, run a broadcast list uh, on plus two six three uh, quad seven one three seven four nine. So if someone just WhatsApps on their broadcast list, we can add them on the broadcast and they'll be receiving daily messages. I actually send daily messages on that broadcast list. Okay. And um, right now I'm working on, a, I, would, I would want to, I'm firstly, we're firstly having an all-night prayer in Zimbabwe, uh, I think around August. So it's going to be updated uh, and posted on social media. Okay. Uh, we, we are, God, God has actually told me that that all-night prayer has to be done. So... We're inviting all and sundry from all over the world. So for those who want to book for that particular all-night, they can use the broadcast list, which I spoke about, plus 263-7-13749. Yeah, and we, uh, I'm, I'm also destined for South Africa very soon. I want to, to do a, a, a crusade in South Africa. Okay. Yes, and the details are going to be also posted on that particular broadcast. All right, so we are going to make sure that we get the numbers uh, on the screen and also in the comments uh, section in the description as well. So uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for uh, spending time with us on this channel today. Um, thank you. Indeed. God bless you. Uh,